Hello, good day, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Kiro Kainde, and I'm your host. It's my pleasure to welcome you here in this lovely day. And I want to thank you for all participants for joining with us in this, uh, the second Apticom webinar, uh, the depth level of weblog education data. And today we have a uh, keynote speaker, Mr. Fajar Purnama, and the moderator is uh, Mrs. Sari Paturusi. First of all, um, we want to hear welcome speech from head of Apticom North Sulawesi, Mr. Luther Datumakulita. Please, sir. Thank you for for this time and i would like to uh, make a short welcome speech good afternoon everyone and welcome to the webinar series number two of indonesian Association's association of higher education in informatics and computing of north sulawesi province namely apticom sulut the theme of this seminar is the depth level of weblog educational data. I am Luther Latumakulita, head of Apticom Salute, and I would like special thanks to Dr. Fajar Purnama from Human Interface and Cyber Security Laboratory, Kumamoto University, for sharing his knowledge in this event. The seminar will be guided did by Dr. Sari Paturusi from Samratulangi University as the moderator and hosted by Master Kuido Kainde, Bachelor of Engineering and Master of Management and Master of Engineering from Manado State University. I also want to say hello to some friends from aboard from Tandawin from Yangon Technological University and also Mr. Sukot and others friends from our board. To save time, let me open the seminar officially and thank you and enjoy this event. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Mr. Luther Latomakulita. And I want to inform you too, uh, we have rules in this uh, webinar, uh, some rules. Uh, number one, please identify yourself uh, with this format, your surname and city or your institution. Thank you very much, Mr. And, uh, hello. And the participant will be mute for voice hearing during the presentation, but will be able to provide questions via chat menu. And do not close your session or log out during the webinar and you may not ask personal questions or not subject related questions during the event and you can use a uh, raise hand feature if you want to ask some question and uh, introduce yourself when you begin speaking okay uh now i want to invite our moderator mrs sari patrusi please Ma'am. Okay. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. It is very nice to meet all of you from all of places, and we can meet today here in the webinar organized by Apticom North Sulawesi. And we proudly present the webinar series about the depth levels of weblog or educational data. And now I would like to introduce, briefly introduce about our speaker this afternoon, Mr. Fajar Purnama. ST, Master of Engineering, PhD from HICC Laboratory, Human Interface Cyber Communication Laboratory, 
Kumamoto University, Japan. Mr. Fajar Purnama obtained his Bachelor of Engineering in Udayana University in the end of 2014 and obtained his Master of Engineering in Graduate School of Science and Technology, Kumamoto University. He now almost graduate doctoral program also in Graduate School of Science and Technology, Kumamoto University. And his research areas in the field of educational technology. So Mr. Fajar already have his closed defense and now uh, waiting for officially PhD from Graduate School of Science and Technology. And for the next 40 minutes, please Mr. Fajar to uh, to explain the thing or the material about educational technology. And then after Mr. Fajar, we have a question and answer session like the host uh, asked before. We, you can raise your hand and then chat. Maybe for the next 20 minutes after the presentation. So Mr. Fajar, the floor is yours. Please do the presentation. Thank you very much for the wonderful Mecca. Welcome, Dr. Sari. And thank you for the opportunity to for me to present in this Apticon webinar to Dr. Luther and Mr. Guido and everyone else of the team. And I will share my presentation slide right now. Can everyone see? Okay. Thank you. Clear. Yes. Okay, that's yes. clear. Yes. Then we will start. Oh, yeah. So this is the title of this slide is development of online of an online mass tracking method for capturing user interaction with web browser content. And my name is Wajah Patilama as Mr. Sari already, Dr. Sari already introduced. I came from Human Interface and Cyber Communication Laboratory. Usagawa Laboratory, Computer Science Analytical Unit, <laughs> and this is my email. <laughs> so this is the. <laughs> so this... Excuse me. Okay. Mrs. Will... Susan, you can mute. Sorry, sorry. Oke, okay, So, can I continue? Yes, please continue. Oke. Okay. Okay. So, this is um So, this is uh, only a part of my dissertation which only contain uh interesting the interesting part for yeah. common for the uh, general audience of my doctoral yeah. dissertation for the novelty of this dissertation i excluded or i put it at the end of this presentation and you can ask me about it in this uh, slide which i will tell you if you want to or you can wait for my open defense which will be in the middle of july or in the end of july so i didn't include it because it may be interesting to a specific researcher but may not be interesting for the general audience oh yes and uh, the theme of this present presentation it is the depth of web blocks and educational data which is in the last section but for the method i'm using here is mouse tracking but before that let us go to the background of this slide so due to the COVID-19 pandemics as you can see we have all many activities online such as email Go searching massive massive information in Google like our meeting in Zoom now. There is social media we can shop online, and even education is online. And especially to this COVID-19 pandemic, these online activities have become even more important, as we are most of the countries are in lockdown, forced to stay at home. But still, the government or some corporation or everyone else are must still work online for example classes you have still have to attend classes online and must absence online so but the problem is how to monitor and follow these activities online 
for example making sure that the students read the passage of their materials or users read terms of service when they are uh, agreeing to a contract or to some service like on YouTube. Instructors identify difficulties, struggles of contents and design like they did on face to face and how to do it online. And one of the most crucial part in education, in online education, how to make sure that the students does not cheat in quizzes or in examinations. It's easy to handle this when we are doing face to face, but how can we do it in online examinations? And if we are doing a meeting or a very important government meeting, you can see that even in the face to face meeting that there are maybe some government officials are sleeping during the um during the meeting then what about the online presentation etc and next one is okay so do you think that the conventional web logs or educational data can handle these kinds of demand of the problem on the previous slide uh, in my opinion opinion it cannot so this is in the top uh, image I show you an example of a Moodle log it tells when either an activity occurs or when the person assess a page and who it is if it's on Moodle you can see the user or this is called an online course or you can or in a general website is the IP address or where the location and stuff and what is the description and what activity they are doing or which page they access but they cannot tell like how they read the contents or which part they are reading however even if however there is already a solution for that which is using some human interface that can generate deeper logs such as there is eye tracking to see which part the readers are paying more attention at and mouse tracking which can uh, track the click move scroll key logging uh, or the location of the mouse cursor to see the interactions of these uh, online users but unfortunately today eye tracking cannot be implemented even though it's the best monitoring quality is the combinations of eye tracking, mouse tracking, and the conventional educational web data and web logs. But unfortunately, eye tracking cannot be implemented in general audience or public. That is because uh, eye tracking is intrusive. As you can see in the previous slide, you need an additional Google Google. It is expensive. In this is in Japan, it costs 10,000 Japanese yen up to 1 million which is around 100 to 1000 dollars one yes no 100 100 dollars to 10000 dollars while for mouse tracking is cost convenient where you don't need any additional hardware which is in default available in every computer and it is not intrusive so the users are not going to be aware if their mouse tracking is active so the second problem is mouse tracking application mentioned in the academia does not suit public implementation. So this is one of the contribution of my doctoral thesis, which is to make an online mouse tracking application. The offline mouse tracking application is usually in laboratories. They must be installed in each client and the cursor position is fixed to the desktop. Data are stored in each client and must be retrieved individually. So you must go to each. Imagine if you have 1,000 students, you have to go to 1,000 students to get the data. So what about the online mass tracking client? The online mass tracking, the application, the client application may still need to be installed on each client, but the data can be stored on the server for the server application is even more uh, advantage that it works on without any additional installation and you only need a browser and it works 
and data are sent to the server like the previous one so the so the objective is to answer problem one which is how to monitor this kind of activities online using mass tracking so so where most uh, online analytics most people online anal analytics or most administrators only mine up to the content level of this uh, mining while we will see deeper what is happening in, in the areas and in the coordinates of the content but before we go we discuss that we will I will show you the system that I have written or I have made so this is the new online mouse tracking that I have published on this publication so this is the how mass tracking is working so mass tracking is actually the recording of uh, the mass movements the where the location the X and Y location in the contents and the mass clicks the mass scrolls and you can there are many more events that you can record such as whether the users are copying are copying a text highlighting a text or cutting and other kind of events so going to the next slide so and this uh, system that I made also work on mobile device so the difference is that when in the desktop is mass tracking on the on the touch screen device is a touch tracking and on the overview this is how the online mass tracking system work so the code so the mass tracking code is inserted into the website so if it's inserted on the website this indicates a server implementation where usually it is inserted into the javascript section of the website if you know that it is consists of html and css but if the mouse tracking is installed directly on the client then it is a client implementation so the client will view the web page which is the html and css if you know about websites and the mass tracking is running on the background which you will be aware general audience will not be uh, be aware and the difference that makes this online and offline is online we store the mass tracking data into a server so not on each client usually in the database so how about the privacy policy for this thing maybe if you are from Indonesia or from Southeast Asia you privacy is not really a problem but in the European Union in the United States or maybe in developed country privacy policy is taken very seriously if we track or we, we collect any data from the users in public internet we must request for permission and we must disclose what kind of information that we are extracting from them and allow them to choose like for example what happened into the Facebook data breach they are now are allowing the users to choose which data they want to share so this is other implementation in public but what about into some uh, special events such as a school and exam where this mass tracking is necessary for monitoring so you don't you don't really have to be like uh, be obligated to this privacy policy you can just strike an agreement with the students that in order for them to follow the exam they must have their mouse tracking their mouse or their other activities track is for the reasons to prevent this honest behavior in online exam the nation for example so after I built this, we built this um, mouse tracking system. We start we make an implementation. So the application, which one can be a client side application, which is uh, which is in type of a browser extension on the right side, if you can see. 
and as for the client requirement any computer works even raspberry pi 3 or a very weak computer as i tested it still works which all you need is a browser that supports javascript the current chrome firefox and internet explorer and current browsers will work with this extension and if it's a client application you just need to install the extension i'll show you it here and the log storage even though it is i emphasize that it is stored online on the server it also supports offline where you can uh, store it as a file if it's for personal or just small use case the other application is our server application where for example here this is our um our uni our laboratory model which is an online course or online learning management system it is to test about some online courses so this one is my mouse tracking application is can be implemented as a blog or a team or other type of plugin and the installation itself if you're interested in using my application all you need to do is just download the 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 plugin and then install like you install any other plugin so just upload so it is that simple for the server i cannot tell which because we haven't done so much uh, experiment yet but this is the server specification that we use and as long as you can run a Moodle, an online management system or some basic web server with Apache 2, PHP 7, and a database such as MySQL MRIDB, it can be used. Hmm. For the advantage of this server side uh, plug, uh, server side application, is the client does not need additional application to run this mouse tracking. So all you need, all they need, is the browser, and then they open the website, and then the mouse is tracked automatically. The disadvantage is it cannot track outside of the website. However, it can still track, it can still tell whether a user is leaving the page or not. If you want to track outside of the web page, website, you need the client application where you install an extension on their, on their own PC. And after uh, we made the complete uh, application, we try to make an exper experiment between a quiz session in Mongolia and Japan. So the students are from Mongolian University. We have a link big from a previous member here in this lab. It was 41 students divided by two sessions. So one session is 20 students, two session, the second section is 21 students. They came from the Department of Electronics and Communication Engineering National University of Mongolia. And it was, uh, the event is a quiz 2019, January, on January 3rd, from around 1 o'clock to 3.30. The, 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 the quiz is a midterm exam, part of the midterm exam of pre, micro preprofessor and interfacing technique course this is the Mo the mongolian or the russian characters of the course for sophomore students and for sophomore and junior year students and we have uh, 15 multiple choice questions with five uh, four four mul four choices and the server is in japan in the in our laboratory so this whole picture is to prove that the mouse tracking application can work uh, borderlessly so as long as you have an internet you can have a public implementation of mouse tracking so now we go to the main theme of this uh, of this webinar which is the depth levels of logs from the content point of view so this uh, so this webinar is actually I this uh, is I is intentionally I intentionally targeted for those who have been working in the learning analytics or online analytics or any kind of analytic web analytics section where I want to introduce you that the conventional logs most convention most people in this 
area only mine up to the content level logs so we know what happened what happened in the for example in the website in the categories or in the web page but most of us do not uh, know what is happening in the areas or in the coordinates of the web page so this is to introduce to you that we that there is another uh, tracking or another type of analytic where we can mine deeper and I will emphasize more in the following so now I will explain what happens when we are mining in the contents or in the web page level logs is we can get the amount of the uh, is we can get the which web page they are looking at and to see and how many how many how many uh how many activities they are doing but we cannot know where they are doing those activities or how they are reading so this chart for example is a chart that is so uh, there is a then showing that a students leaving a quiz page during the quiz problem so we can know that how many times they leave the quiz so even just a bit of a chart shows that there is a potential potential dishonest conduct that they are leaving the quiz page for google or for messenger or asking their friends or whatever to may find other information outside of the quiz or examination and so with this we what is i made a possible software implementation based on the finding in this section that we found out that most that students mostly leave the quiz page when they are attempting an examination for example we can not notify the examiner that there is a potential cheating because uh, students have leave the quiz page or we can make a stricter implementation of immediately disqualifying when a student's leaving the page so for example if a students are leaving the page they are immediately disqualified there is a strict one so not only when the mouse leave it can work when you press a windows or meta button it can work when you press uh, 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 the alt and a tap button well for example whenever you move to another page you will be disqualified something like that So uh, the next one is the section level log. So this is the area what have what is happening inside the areas of the section. So previously we only know what is what is happening that the students attempt a quiz page, but we don't know how or which part they are paying most attention. So this section level as the section or areas level log is able to identify uh, which part they spend most in which part they are paying more attention on and which part they may find it difficult or easy for example so for this heat map shows that the the red one question three they spend more time doing question three maybe because it is uh, more difficult they spend less time on sec on the second on the second quiz question the, in the second questions and they don't spend times on other other places and this is the detail uh, detail heat map of the quiz session so as you can see that they spend more time on quiz 1 quiz 3 and quiz 13 uh, you can I don't have much time to make full analytics of this heat map but I will show you one interesting one you can look at quiz 15 on the very on the very right they spend very less time on the last questions however as you can see it is Greece it is it is green however they uh, I forgot to put one after they get most of the quiz 15 wrong so probably the question 15 is difficult and it is the last question they don't want to spend more time on the quiz and they don't want to finish which is maybe one of the reason why they don't spend much time on quiz 15 quiz 13 also they make uh, many mistakes so 
and uh, they spend more time and it shows that the quiz 13 is difficult so another possible software to implement in this heat map or in this uh, area level log is to have a read detector for example when you're reading a term of service on an agreement we have to uh, then make sure that you uh, the students or the participants or users completely read the terms of service or agreement for well, the first one is the it's green meaning that they didn't read at all so the pop-up will come out and said please read the terms of service while the second example in the middle they have read article 1 and article 3 but they haven't read the second section so when they try to agree they will tell them please finish reading article 2 and finally on the right one shows that um, that when they have completely read the agreement then they can proceed this is just an example of uh, application so as you can see here I have read passage 1 and passage 2 but I didn't read passage 3 I will be asked to read passage 3 until I finish so once I finish reading passage 3 then I can move to the next uh, to agree so something like that and finally the the deepest level uh, the deepest level log from the contents point of view is the coordinate level log so the coordinate is to show what is happening exactly in each point of the contents for example in this case it's able the the triangle is left clicks the square is middle clicks and the pentagon is right click and I can plot the movement of the mouse as well but that is too much to plot so for now I'm going to only using click as an example and so this one the, uh, as for the top one the when the students perform a many triangle here this is a many left clicks so the red one is probably showing that the students are highlighting the questions and then they perform a right click and they and which may indicate that they open an auxiliary menu and they maybe copy the text so and usually after this the the it is detected that the students leave left the page to search for google or some other services to find the information about these questions so maybe they're trying to find answers outside indicating cheating so this is the interesting part the other parts where the blue one is these clicks showing that they are selecting some questions and this the green one the square one is a middle click this is showing that they are scrolling up and down using the middle click so finally we are at the end of this presentation so to conclude so this presentation demonstrated mouse tracking as a solution to problem one regarding to the moderating demand for human online interaction for example making sure that a person or a user reads the passage answered the second problem regarding the public mouse tracking application so the mouse tracking application here can be implemented by anyone it is implementable online however i did not explain the massive wide implementation for example university level or a country level which can for 24 hours because it generates big data so about how to reduce that data you can i can explain to you if you want or you can uh you can follow my presentation later in my open defense in the middle or the end of july which i will share later so that is the end of my presentation and I will return this to the moderator, Dr. Sari. Thank you. So, Dr. Sari, I have finished my presentation. Okay, thank you very much, Mr. Fajar. So, ladies and gentlemen, uh, we move to the next session, question and answer session. Okay.
Okay, so will you, should I read the question myself or will you read for me? So please, Mr. Fajar, read in the chat. Okay. Zoom chat, you can read question from Mr. Parabellum Rompas. Okay, so the question is, what are your program's weakness and how can you make a fix to them? So there is a two point of weakness. So there is a two point of weakness. The first part is for the interaction monitoring. As you can see for the reading of passage, we cannot fully determine that the, that that a person is reading from a mouse tracking for a from the mouse cursor. So we cannot use fully use the mouse cursor as an indicator. For example, there are many people who are not moving their mouse or put their mouse outside of the browser or the page when they are reading a passage or when they are reading something. So we so for reading, mouse is not a good indicator for today. But eye tracking is a good but eyeball or eye movement is a good indicator for reading. And the second one, the and the second perspective, there's the second side of the weakness of this one is the huge big data generated. So we did uh, 41 students, which is only three hours, and it generates up to over 100 megabyte of data. So imagine if we have a thousand or ten thousand or one hundred thousand students, and not three hours but 24 hours and you can you can please multiply how much data that it can it will generate it can rival even YouTube and it can rival the big data of major corporations so for massive implementation I think only powerful companies such as Google and Amazon can implement for us, we can only limit the implementation, like limiting the sampling rate. We can we can perform compression, and we can uh, reduce yeah reduce to many types of compression. In the novelty of my dissertation, I made a lossy compression, which you can follow if you are interested in my next presentation. So from from Professor Tandawin, any further improvement in your system? Yes, so in my system is that uh, one, uh, the, ana the one improvement is the analytic side or the user side of the system. So for now, I only develop an interface to record the mass tracking. But the data is in form of a table or database, only in form of a many, only in form of Excel, if you know. So about for the analytics, like if you want to draw a heat map, if you want to make, to perform uh, data analytics, uh, for example, detecting whether a student is cheating automatically, that one I haven't made. So, I, so, so this one is friendly for the monitoring side, it's not friendly for analytical side. I haven't made that one. So that is one further improvement in the system that, that I can make, that can be made, which does necessarily does not have to be me. Yeah, it's open the further research from yes. any researcher out of the world. <laughs> yes, it, the code is open on GitHub, so it's open source. Okay, question from Stephen. Yeah, Stantino. Mr. Stephen Stantino. Did you see the different result of awareness variable of users while using application of mouse tracking? Uh, yes, for it, it depends on the, first it depends on the activity. As we are doing a quiz activity, so they are forced to use the mouse to click and answer some questions. So that one we can see a difference in the result of awareness of the users. So that, for example, our users are paying more attention on question three 
users are for example not paying attention on question 15 and if you're more they are they are performing some highlights and some places uh, highlights on the text maybe they are copying the text to go to another to copy to cheat and they are and we even detect that there are many times that the students leave the quiz page so that they maybe are not paying full attention to the quiz page and we can detect the time for example they, there may be time that their mouse is idle so maybe like they are we have found that they are 20 seconds idle 10 second idle can be indicated that they are on their mobile phone or they are talking to their friends so something like that we can make uh, awareness but for other activities such as if activities are reading passage we cannot do that because users don't use their mouse cursor to read they use their eyes and maybe like when they are watching a video they don't use their mouse to watch the video they use their eyes or they use their stuff so that is the limitation of the awareness it depends on the activities so i hope that answered the question you can ask more if you are not satisfied so from dr budi nugroho rather than using mouse tracker to monitor user activities we can ask user to always turn on their video camera what is your opinion um yes we can use our we can always turn on the their video camera and um, actually that is the research of my friend so the so so the issue with this is that we need an application for image processing so for now for the image processing of the face or open the video camera usually most of us need to use a high high quality camera and even for eye tracker we need an expensive device so the problem with a uh, web camera today is a uh, low quality and may not be able to make a uh, detailed analysis but my but i'm not going to answer this question because this is my friend his name is uh, jen cheng yang from china he is trying to make an eye tracking tracking the eyeball using the webcam uh, partially from the looks of it he is able to do but that is he tried on his own laptop we still need to perform more testing maybe we need to try different laptops different cameras and if this is a sex successful we can make an eye tracking using a web camera so no need to use that stuff so yeah so for the your question is possible and it's already it's already under research by my colleague Okay, it's an interesting area for research. Yeah, thank you very much. Okay, so are there any more questions from ladies and gentlemen, please? I think Rishnand, Dr. Rishnandar. Have a question. I was right in the chat box for my question. But okay. I didn't know, did you read or no? Okay. Ooh, yeah. I read, I read. Oh, yeah, sorry. But, yeah. <laughs> what did I miss? Or oh, maybe it's lagging here. Okay, so which part is the... Sorry, Mr. Wonder, Wonder, your to challenge. Which part is the big challenge of your work for the circle proposed method? So circle means in my area. So the big challenge is um okay i will answer the biggest challenge the biggest challenge is a uh, massive implementation so for now this can work with 30 students and if i want to make a university so in unsrat how many students maybe they have 1 million students or something yeah 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 maybe okay so 1 million times 100 megabyte that is how much data you need to store and that is three hours you need to multiply it by for 24 hours multiply it by uh, how many so by eight so you need a very big 
data for this. So my so the second journal of this publication was published in the journal of big data because this mass tracking generates a big data and it's still is still a challenge for now to implement for massive implementation. So it's either we found a better compression method or either we can find a better hardware to store the data. So that is the biggest challenge. How about the cloud? Cloud service? Cloud service if they provide. So Google, Google and Amazon can handle the big data because if you can handle video, you can handle this one. What I am uh, not I am not uh, confident is for university level and developing countries. Yes, of course. I see. Okay, the next question from Dr. Wulan Kaunang. Mm -hmm. How to make us skill all the methods? Skill. How to make us how to use how you mean how to how to use maybe how to what how to use oh how to use okay so how to use the method is actually okay how to the, use properly or something like okay, that maybe how to use properly of the method actually there is no such a restriction so all you need to do is uh, install and then the mouse is tracked so is so the the challenge of I provide the data, the mass tracking data, and for the how to use it is for the analytic analytical side. So there are many analytics. So one analytic example is a visualization analytic where we can draw a heat map, we can draw correlations, correlations of the attention of the students to the mass and so ever. So something like that we need to perform we can many have already performed uh, analytical analytics and can be implemented on the mass tracking for example like a machine learning online learning or etc you can use those kind of learning also you're welcome okay so are there any questions from chat or even want to ask a question directly please we have still around five minutes maybe because almost one hour with dr fajar Okay, maybe if, uh, ladies and gentlemen, you can ask the contact uh, of Mr. Fajar. So if you have any question in the further, you can contact Mr. Fajar directly. Yes, you're welcome. So, please, uh, the floor is yours, Mr. Kido, for the host. Oh, okay. okay. <laughs> Thank you very much, uh, Mrs. Sari. And Mr. Luther, you have uh, any want to say closing speech, yeah. maybe? Uh, maybe I want to, uh, I think uh, maybe someone or some participant want to ask some question in Indonesia. Yeah. In Bahasa, it's okay. We can use the language because uh, not uh cannot speaker is indonesian so okay if you can use bahasa or directly uh, ask to the uh, to mr fajar i just want uh, can i use bahasa yes please please, please. so sampai saat ini fajar sudah punya pacar belum <laughs> Wow. Nice questions, okay. Wow. <laughs> Good questions. Moderatornya juga? Punya belum? Sambil menunggu, sambil menunggu pertanyaan yang lain mungkin bisa direct. Bertanya. Susah dapetinnya, Pak. Ya, CVB mau bertanya. Ini tidak yang yang sudah. Silakan, silakan. 
Pakai bahasa juga, oke. Okay. Use bahasa or English Tunggu is okay. Belum ada pertanyaan. <laughs> ya, <Yeah>, please. <coughs> Kita masih punya berapa menit? Tujuh menit ya. Uh, five more, five more. Sampai. Lima menit lagi, five more. Lima menit. Oke. Okay. Yeah. Jadi usul aja ke uh, host, setelah itu ada sesi foto ya. Oke, okay. oke, okay, oke. Okay. Atau, oh, sorry. atau sekarang aja uh, oh, okay. kita nunggu uh, all participant please uh, for about on your video maybe yeah to all participant you can on your video taking picture together yeah okay hi Jiju <laughs> <laughs> Saya tidak tahu membahasakan dalam bahasa Jepang itu apa ya. <laughs> Say cheese. <laughs> Oke. Okay. Uh, okay. Oh, nah, nah, thanking nah, for you all. Another question. Yeah. That's a curious question. Ya, yeah, ya, yeah, from Dr. Stephenson. Oh, Just question, my, maybe. Just question, curious. Just a curious question about research method. Should the users aware when they use to use your application intentionally versus unintentionally when they use? That is a that is actually a good uh, research. So you so that is actually open for research. So what happen if they are intentionally and versus they are unintentionally? But based on my experience or based on the previous literature. So intentionally, like, yeah, intentionally, they probably wouldn't cheat. For example, if we said like we give a warning, your mouse is tracked or whatever, um, they probably won't like uh, go to the another page. They probably wouldn't do something funny and stuff. If it's unintentionally, then they are in their origin, original self. So they are their self. So that is the difference between intentionally versus unintentionally, which is open for research. So you can do it if you want. So I hope that answers the question. Okay. You're welcome. I think we're going to finish this uh, webinar. Uh, how about uh, Mr. Luther? Yeah, and I just want to say for all participants that thank you yeah. very much to enjoy this event. And I close off officially this event. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Mr. Luther, and to much, all participants uh, from abroad. Yeah. Participants uh, we have participant. from India, from Myanmar. Dr. Nuru. Yes. Nuru. Is that the maybe? Yeah. yeah, Mr. Mr. Disnanda from Lipi, oh, thank you very much. Stay healthy. Yeah, stay okay. healthy. Maybe Dr. Nurul want to say something or just ask maybe some anyone want to sing. <laughs> Dr. Nurul, maybe not Dr. Nurul want to say something. Okay, 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 please. Uh, Dr. Nurul, if you're yes, Dr. Nurul, Dr. Nurul from India. From India. Mm -hmm. Um, you want to say something? Yeah, maybe you have to unmute your mic. Yeah. Namaskar, Mr. Nurul. <laughs> uh, Krishna uh, you can Nika. just unmute. Unmute mic. Before we yeah. closing okay, this. Please. Yeah, thank, okay. Thank, yeah. thank you, uh, Dr. Luther, and thank you. Thank you, Dr. Fajar, inviting me such a wonderful webinar. And this was a very uh, interactive and uh, uh, good webinar for uh, new technology. And uh, I hope you will invite again uh, if you conduct another webinar. Thank you to everyone. And thank you, uh, Dr. Luther, Dr. Credo, Dr. Sari, Dr. Fajar, to everyone. And Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.
Waalaikumsalam warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. And other else, maybe Professor Tanda want to say something <laughs> from Myanmar. Sorry, yes. From I'm Myanmar. Very thank you, Tanda, Sorry, and Father, and all participants. Yes. Have a wonderful presentation, Father. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Uh, yes. Uh, if I have a question, I I can con I can contact you. Okay. Yes, any right. any platform is okay. <laughs> Facebook, <laughs> any platform, <laughs> okay. Yeah. Hi, Tandasan. Hi, sorry. <clears throat> okay, for the four times. <laughs> I should thank um, you to all participants and uh, goodbye, yeah. everyone. See you soon. Okay, and maybe yeah. photo session. Yeah. We are already photo session. <laughs> already? Yes, yes, yes. Oh. Thank you very much, everyone. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you very see ya, see ya. Good night. Thank you, Fajar. Thank you, Fajar. Stop Fajar. swimming. Bye-bye, Fajar. Yeah, one quick time. Can you share? Yes, yes, yes. Please, please, please. Email ID for everyone so we can interact further in another very much. Salam ya, buat semua. It's ICC Lemon. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. Bye. So invite to another webinar, you said? Yeah. No, I'm, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm asking, uh, can you share to email for all participants? So in future, if you organize some wonderful webinar, so I can invite all of you. OK. Hmm. Pardon? I can, I can hear. Hello, I, uh, Dr. Muro. Maybe you know, I'm actually I'm asking uh, if you can share the participant even a bit. So in future, if you can you know uh, if you can organize some wonderful and uh, interesting webinar. So if you possible to invite all of you. So if you if if it is possible, then you can share the email address of our participant. Okay. Yes. Can you get? Can you get what he means? Uh, can okay, I cannot really hear, but so yeah. can you? So I'm, writing. Yes. Or maybe more, write? more. I'm writing, I'm writing. Okay, please. Oh, yeah, okay. Yes. Don't worry because I just end our live streaming on YouTube. So, I have streaming YouTube. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. So it's the uh, relax, <laughs> relax session. Yeah, we have relax conversation. <laughs> maybe we want to. Uh, schedule our next webinar. Oh, okay. Oh. Yeah. Yeah, benar kontak, oh, yeah. kontaknya. Okay. Ah, okay. uh, yeah. Hmm. Well. Oh. Oh yeah. I, I, they want I, to make a web webinar. Yeah. Yes. Okay, okay, oh. okay, 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 okay. So maybe okay. Master Kido. Uh, we'll send you all contact of participants here. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Thank you very much. Okay. We're looking forward for your webinar, webinar. Dr. Yes. Nurul. Actually, actually, last week I had invited the webinar Understanding Legal Risk uh, Remote. Teaching and learning process from Dr. Sony, he was from Malaysia International University, but I did not have the email addresses because of all of you, so it was not possible to know. Hmm. Thank you, thank you so much. Yeah, you're welcome. You're welcome, thank you. You're welcome. Okay, now if uh, it's uh, 15, 15 past two minutes. Yeah. Can you close this? Saya sudah, saya sudah close okay. kok, tenang aja. <laughs> sudah di close, oh, okay. uh, we just end our live streaming on YouTube, so we can chit chat or something else. And we waiting for...